Benvenuto YouTube, it's Brother G, and I welcome y'all back to the Copper for Christ channel. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the war that's going on in Israel and Palestine. Uh, this wasn't a message that the Lord had uh, had me prepare. This was something he dropped on me uh, after just watching and listening to the stuff that's been going on. Uh, hopefully y'all caught the little uh, less than two minute clip that I made, the movie saying uh, Israel, Palestine, the movie, because basically that's what the media, the news media has uh, turned this into. Um, so we're gonna talk about this war <laughs> and get into it from an actual biblical standpoint because What's happening over there could possibly look to certain Christians that aren't really grounded well with the Lord and in tune with the Holy Spirit, that this could actually be the build up to the uh, final battle at Megiddo, the War of Armageddon. I do not believe that that is what this is. However, this is the enemy trying to make it look like that to get energy out of people and be a vampire on the masses. But before I get ahead of myself, um, the shirt I'm wearing tonight is, it's not a FedEx shirt, it's a fed up shirt. And it says, give God control. And that's what we all need to do as followers of Jesus Christ, is give him control. Because even if it was the build up to the battle of, the, uh, of Armageddon, so what? We're going home soon. You know what I mean? It shouldn't scare people. And um, this message is going to be to get y'all grounded soundly into the Word of God and what the Scriptures say. I have no motivation other than what God tells me to preach, to tell y'all this stuff. Um, so... I want to just start off with, now, start off with a little talk about the world, okay? When I say the world, I mean, I'm well into my 40s now, and the world is nothing like what it was when I was growing up, and some of y'all are so young that you were either, some not even born when 9-11 happened, some were young when it happened. Um, I was a man when it happened, you know, and it seems like it was just yesterday. There's just so much. <laughs> but the point of what I'm trying to say is that I've watched a slow decline of how the world has taken God out. They've removed God gradually from the schools. They've removed prayer from school. They've removed God from the courthouse. They've removed, there, there, there used to be a separation between church and state. Now there's not. Now the, it's just communism and being told what to think. If the creativity of our children is being stifled by the school system, the indoctrination system. And I don't want to get off on things that are not pertinent to this talk because we have quite a bit to cover. But I want to say this, is that Satan's kingdom and the army of darkness knows the word of God better than most Christians do. It even says so in his word, that the children of disobedience are more clever than the children of God, okay? Now, I say that to say this. All these things that are happening over there, people are dying. Make no mistake about it. People are dying. It's a sacrifice. It's an occultic sacrifice. And my heart really goes out to these people that are losing their lives. But I have an anger building towards Christians that have this idolatry of Israel. They don't even realize it, I think, that they're part of this Zionist indoctrination. Now, words like Zion seem like good words, right? Because we hear the word of God all the time, Mount Zion, we hear, you know, that's God's holy mountain, Israel, Mount Zion, that is Israel. 
What was created in 1948 and 47, whenever it was established, that is not the true Hebrew Israelites even residing there. They are Ashkenazi Jews. If you did not watch the Cry to the Dead sermon, please go back, watch that one. I have other old messages that Lord willing will be up soon again. Uh, the Noahide laws, y'all need to know about that. The Sanhedrin video I did, y'all need to know about that. Uh, the Empty Lot is another sermon that will be up. Y'all need to know about that. That was actually a prophetic message I preached in 2018 about Gog and Magog and Russia, Iran, which in the word of God is Daedon, um, and uh, China. But we're talking about what's happening in Israel right now. And to really break this down the way it needs to be, we need to go through what the abomination of desolation is. And we will go through that in this. We also need to go through and talk about what the time of the Gentiles means, okay? Because the people that are claiming that they are Jews over there are not. They are of the synagogue of Satan that Jesus spoke of, okay? Now, the Palestinians over there are Ishmaelites. Now, none of it really means anything, okay? Because people can have a hatred for somebody else, not rightfully so or righteously so, but people do. And the only people that claim anti-Semitism are the Ashkenazis, when anything is said against them, when they're the ones that are punching people in the face and then turning around and saying, uh, you know what I'm saying? So. It's not right. And I'm going to share something with you all out of uh, Genesis uh, chapter 17, verse 20 in a moment about uh, the Ishmaelites. Because believe it or not, they are actually Semites. They belong over there. Now, politically, I have no political stance whatsoever. I follow the politics of the Most High God. And I am in tune with his word and the things that are being portrayed is the enemy trying to force something that it's not God actually doing it. Now, God allows these things to happen, but we're going to go through so much scripture tonight that you're going to see why he does this. Okay. Now. It doesn't matter whether somebody is an actual Hebrew Israelite, whether somebody is an Ashkenazi, whether somebody is a Palestinian. It doesn't matter. If they don't have Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter. Okay? It just doesn't matter because without him, all are damned. Okay? So, let's hear the promise that God and the blessing, actually, that God gave to Ishmael. Listen to this. Listen to this. I haven't heard people preach on this. Ishmaelites are very blessed people in the eyes of the Most High God. Genesis chapter 17, verse 20. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget and I will make him a great nation. That's the Most High God speaking. A blessing on Ishmael. He said he's going to make him 12 nations out of him. And in other parts of Genesis, you can read about those, those 12 nations and kingdoms. The only things that uh, Ishmael did not inherit was the uh, promise that Israel did. Okay, the covenant. But God did bless them. And today the Palestinians would be Ishmaelites. Okay. Now, if they're Muslims, they're in grave error, okay? Without Jesus Christ, everybody is in grave error. So let's just get that straight right now, okay? So we need to go over the desolate, uh, abomination of desolation. Before we get to scripture, I want to go over the actual root words of it in the Hebrew and also in the Greek and define it and go over a little bit of history because Prophecy is a cyclical thing. Prophecy 
history does repeat itself. It's part of why the Ouroboros, the snake eating its own tail, you know, uh, it's a cannibalistic system. It's a system that repeats itself because the abomination of desolation that was spoken of in Daniel actually happened way before the time of Christ. And we'll get to that in a second. But just let's just do everything in decency and order. I got so much to talk about here. I get so excited that sometimes I jump the gun. So let's get into the definition of what abomination from the Old Testament means. The actual Hebrew word is shakats. And I might be butchering that how I'm saying it, but uh, the spelling will be up on the screen, shakats. And about what it means is it's something that is disgusting, filthy, to loathe it, or abhor it. It's used in the sense of idolatrous worship practices that lack decency and morals, okay? That's from the Old Testament uh, standard. Now, if you wanna to go to the Greek and to the New Testament of what abomination means, it's bedilgma <laughs> or deligma, bedilgma. Uh, the B is probably silent, deligma. That'll be up there as well. And what that means from the New Testament standpoint, it is a detestable or foul thing usually due to its nasty odor, okay? So, that's the definitions of abomination. Now, let's go to desolation. The biblical Old Testament word for desolation is shamem, which shamem, shamem, it looks a lot like shaman, and it means to destroy, to lay waste, to devastate, to be astonished. <laughs> to be astonished means like literally to be in awe, jaw on the floor of what just happened. Like can't even talk type of thing. All right. Um, continuing on, it's something that's so horrible that it can leave a person speechless. That's the definition. The New Testament, the Greek word um, is eremosis for uh, desolation and essentially it means the same thing a making of something desolate Bibic now biblical desolation involves destroying and desecrating and leaving something in such a horrible condition that an onlooker is left speechless okay now Jesus said something interesting and we'll get to the scripture in Matthew he said it in Matthew he said it in Luke he said it in Mark um, he said something to the effect, uh, we'll read it in Matthew shortly, but uh, he said something to the effect of when you see this happening in Jerusalem, um, when you see the abomination of desolation standing where it ought not to, um, spoken of by the prophet Daniel, know that the end is near, basically. We'll go right to the scripture shortly. But what is important to note now is the fact that Jesus is quoting Daniel about the abomination of desolation for a future event that's going to happen in Jerusalem. By the time of Jesus, when he walked the earth, the abomination of desolation that Daniel was speaking of had actually happened. Okay? So that's why I'm, 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 I'm bringing this to y'all that prophecy is cyclical. Nobody can argue that because out of Jesus' mouth, he's speaking of a future event of abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel. When Daniel prophesied it, it happened once already. And we're going to talk about that right now. It happened after the time of Alexander the Great, uh, who was in AD 300s. So um, this happened in AD 168, or a, uh, I'm sorry, BC 168 and 167, okay? Jerusalem during that time was under the rule of the eighth Seleucid king, Antiochus IV, and he is better known in history as Antiochus Epiphanes, Greek for manifestation of God lowercase g so he's a demonic god a 
okay. Um, see, there's things I need to teach that are I haven't had time to. And this message, the Lord wanted me to preach this message now, so I got to do this. So, this Epiphanes, Antiochus, he was um, about 150 years after um, Alexander the Great when the uh, world was becoming Hellenized. So let's let's read here what I got. Uh, Antiochus Epiphanes was a was very hostile to Jewish worship, and he attempted to Hellenize and enforce the adoption of Greek culture and religion onto the Jews in Judea. He outlawed all forms of Jewish worship and placed a Hellenized high priest over the temple who was sympathetic to his rule. He eventually outlawed practices like circumcision, which in the Old Testament days was a must, and biblical dietary laws, and he also outlawed Sabbath observation, to observe the Sabbath. Um, you could say that this is an abomination standing, <laughs> and it's going to make the temple desolate, okay? Now, when, while Antiochus was on a military campaign in Egypt in 168 BC, a group of Jews actually revolted against the high priest that Antiochus had appointed. And they took control of Jerusalem shortly uh, for a time. Antiochus, then he returned to Jerusalem and he violently put down the Jewish rebellion, killing thousands of Jews and selling others into slavery. Okay, so this is what happened. In 167 BC, Antiochus, because he, it, it wasn't enough, he keeps going further and further with this. He erected a statue of the Greek god, lowercase d, g, Nephilim god, Zeus, in the temple of Jerusalem. Do you know that was obviously the abomination that is going to cause desolation? Okay? B.C., before Christ, 167. Okay? But Jesus speaks of one coming. So... I know these glasses probably look crazy on me, huh? Okay, so Antiochus returned and violently put down the Jewish rebellion, killing thousands of Jews and selling others into slavery. He puts Zeus into the temple. He also ordered that swine, an unclean animal that is a no-no in the dietary laws. I don't eat swine just because the Lord leads me not to. It's not healthy. You know, everything God said not to eat dietarily, people shouldn't eat because it's not good for them. So, anyway, um, that, that, that's all up to personal conviction. Though. I'm not going to tell people what to do when it comes to stuff like that. Um, biblically, unclean animals. He, okay, let me start this again. He also offered, ordered that swine, which is biblically, obviously, an unclean animal and other unclean animals be offered on the temple altar, which is desecrating the holy place, which this fulfilled Daniel's prophecy, the abomination that makes desolation. These acts were loathsome, abhorrent, and detestable to the Jewish people and were the first fulfillment of the abomination of desolation. Okay, you get no argument here from me. Now, these events also inspired the Maccabean Revolt, which happened a little bit later, and that was when the uh, small group of uh, Sicarii were formed. That's where the uh, Hebrew Israelite called call themselves Sicarii. The real Sicarii were a revolt that, that were formed shortly after that. Um, so basically, that's, that's the definition there of um, the abomination of desolation and we see that it did happen um, in the time of Hellenize, when, when the Greeks were Hellenizing and taking over the temple. And it's interesting that the book of Maccabees, not all four of them, but the first two at least, were taken out of the scriptures and um, they're apocrypha. I think they're good reads. As long as 
you are in good standing with God and you're living righteously, you've studied to show yourself approved, you should read the Apocrypha. Not just those, but the first two books of Maccabees, I would sign off on, definitely. Uh, we're going to go see, now here's a big problem too, going back to this war in Israel, because there are pimp pastors out there that are filling people's heads with garbage, fear, and lying to them, and they have this idolatry of Ashkenazi Jews, which are not the real Hebrews, but it doesn't even matter, okay? But they have this idolatry of Ashkenazi Jews and this Zionist agenda that they really are for. And so many Christians just, they're like uh, lemmings. They just jump over the cliff and they don't even know why. Stop idolizing people in Israel, man. Stop it. So the pastors, though, they're the ones that uh, have to be held accountable for what they're teaching, okay, and what they're doing. So let's hear what God has to say about fake pastors. Let's just hear what he has to say. We're going to go to uh, Ezekiel chapter 13, verses 16 through 17. To wit, the prophets of Israel, which prophesy concerning Jerusalem, and which see visions of peace for her, and there is no peace, saith the Lord God. Likewise, thou son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people, which prophesy out of their own heart, and prophesy thou against them. Okay, so that's what y'all Christians need to do and stop listening to these fake pastors that are leading y'all to waste money in Israel. If you watch the Cry to the Dead sermon out of the um, Ashkenazi's own mouths, they said that they buried God quietly in the night and that the God of the Old Testament is not the God of the New Testament and that uh, they don't even need God anymore. That's really what they believe, these Talmudic Jews. I'm not gonna go back and watch that sermon uh, watch the other videos when I get them re-uploaded, uh, the Noahide laws and such. But we're going to go and we're going to listen to what Jesus has to say because the last thing I want you all to do, because while the people are really dying and these things are happening, they're putting across occultic um, numbers, which are codes for people in the know. They're giving messages back and forth. They're basically what they're doing is they're speaking a language that you don't understand, but you're giving your energy to this thing, this show that's happening over there, where real people are dying. But that's what the kingdom of darkness needs. It needs blood. We know that from the first murder, okay? But I wanna go to uh, the words of Jesus Christ now. What he said, because it could look like, you know, because there are scriptures that say, you know, when Jerusalem is surrounded, uh, this and that. It's interesting that all the people that are lining up against Israel right now are actually lands that Joshua did not fulfill what he should have fulfilled. So it's like uh, during the conquest of Joshua after Moses. So it's like the things that, that he failed to do completely 100%, there's still thorns in the side of the world. Do you see? Um, but just know this. It is not leading up to Armageddon right now, what is happening there. In fact, what I've seen is the enemy trying to force God's hand. And because it's not God actually doing it, they had to pull back a little bit. That's why they've been having these hostage um, things going back and forth. I mean, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Nobody really behaves like that in war. And really, who fights wars face-to-face -face anymore in this day and age? I mean, seriously. Uh, you know, there's been video of um, these fake news anchors, CNN, like people should not go there. I mean, it's good to go to see what the occult's doing and that's it, but to actually take it serious and feed your energy into it, don't do that. Listen to Jesus. This is what Jesus said. Gospel of Matthew, the Holy Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, verses 4 through 18. We're going to read it. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. 
For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Do you hear that? Jesus is telling you the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines. Are we seeing famines in some places? Yes, we are. And pestilences. Are we seeing pestilences, real and fake? Yes, we are. And earthquakes in diverse places. That's been happening for the past uh, at least 10, 15 years. Crazy earthquakes all over the place. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Yes, we're in the beginning of sorrows. We've been there for a minute. Thank God that he's so merciful. Because the uh, rapture, that's not going to be the way most people think it is either. But this ain't about that. Verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Just a couple weeks ago, there was a, a Ashkenazi guy that got hit in the head by a Palestinian in California. He couldn't take a hit and he died. The man died. For what? For what? There was a guy um, who was, well, let's, let's, let's continue reading a little bit because these things are happening now. They're gonna be much worse though. They're gonna ramp up way more. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. That's what's happening. There's a, 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 a Christian uh, street preacher just last week, a few days ago, got shot in the head for preaching the word of God. Uh, I would say that that's hate, right? And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And look, that is happening right now in record numbers. All There are so many people on YouTube especially, not especially, but because this is the way of the, 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 the new TV for people, uh, they, I don't understand how people can fall for these guys. I really don't. I really, really don't. But then you got real men of God that, that, that nobody cares what they have to say, but that's the way it is, you know. And false prophets shall, shall rise and shall deceive many. Make sure that if you're watching this video, that that ain't going to be you. And because, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Now, I want to just talk about a little something here about the love of many that shall wax cold. Because this was quite interesting. There was a guy that this just happened. And you know, the date of this recording is 11-28-2023. I don't know, it'll probably be up, Lord willing, tomorrow, today, a couple days. But 11-28-23 is when this was recorded. Uh, there was a guy, Stuart Selowitz, Selowitz. He was an Obama aide, and he went on an anti-Muslim rant recently. A uh, hot dog vendor, I believe, in New York. The guy was just trying to sell hot dogs and make, make, make a couple dollars, make a living. And this creep goes off on him. This Stuart Selowitz, an Obama aide, which I find very curious because Obama, it looked like it hurt him to uh, say Christian or anything like that when he was in office. I mean, the man was obviously a Muslim and this guy went off on a Muslim who was an old aide of his. But that just goes to show you how the love of many are waxing cold and people are hating each other because iniquity abounds. Verse 13, but he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Okay. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come. I don't believe that there is the gospel preached to all nations the way it should be. Because it's very simple. It's the life, the ministry of Christ, his death, burial, resurrection, and ascension to heaven. 
That's the gospel. That's the good news. I mean, it's very simple. God died for you. Like, come on, man. All right, verse 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, <coughs> excuse me, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Can something that's not alive stand? Well, it could if it's a statue, because we saw that, you know, the prophecy of Daniel was fulfilled during the time of Antioch, Antiochus Epiphanes, uh, when he desecrated the temple, he put a statue of Zeus in there, but Zeus was a demigod, a Nephilim, really, because he was born of a fallen angel, Kronos, by, by their, you know. Um, so, it's something with two legs, human-esque form, plus the pig was a filthy animal that was put there to be made a sacrifice in the temple. So that was the abomination of desolation. But now, you see, there are people, and yes, I'm going to say this, there are people over there that are not Jews, that are standing in the holy place where they are not, claiming that they are Jews. This would be an abomination. Mene. Okay? However, simply because they don't believe in Christ, that's why. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Now let me pose this question to y'all that might think or feel that no, this is actual biblical prophecy playing out. We're about at the door to Armageddon, Megiddo, all of that. Why are you not fleeing to the mountains right now, if you really believe that? Instead, you're watching YouTube, you're watching me on YouTube, you're watching whatever you're doing on YouTube, you're going to work, you're paying your bills, or trying to at least, you're still doing things, right? Well, if you really believe that the end is coming, and here's another thing too, because I have to preach on this at a later date. Most Christians don't really understand this, and I will break it down, Lord willing, in, in, in the future, near future, hopefully. Lord willing, um, there's a difference between the millennial reign of Christ and the end end when the new Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem comes after Armageddon, when the Most High destroys heaven and earth and a new heaven and a new earth are formed and Satan is thrown into the lake of fire. Hell is picked up and thrown into the lake of fire. Because hell is a physical place. Because the movement of forming the new Jerusalem doesn't allow there to be any more physicality of hell. It has to go. And so will Satan. And all evil will go on that day. But there's a difference between that and the millennial reign of Christ. Where he reigns for a thousand years. And then the devil is loose for a little while. I just want to put that out there. I just want to put that out there. Okay? But let's hear what Jesus says. Let them, okay, let's read 15 again. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. So if you believe that's the time we're in right now, then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field returned back to take his clothes. If that's really what y'all believe it is, where we're at, why aren't y'all doing that? That's a command from God. That with so much haste, y'all need to flee because there's going to be no time. There's going to be no time. It's not where we're at right now. Let's go to Ezekiel 15, because this is what's going to happen to Jerusalem. Ezekiel 15, chap uh, chapter 15, verse 6 through 8. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, as the vine tree among the trees of the forest, 
which I have given to the fire for fuel. So will I give the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Wait a minute. Did God just say he's going to give the inhabitants of Jerusalem to be fuel for the fire? Could that possibly be why Jesus said to flee when you see the abomination of desolation that Daniel spoken of set up in the temple? Now, I do believe in conjunction with that, that the people that are there Judging by Old Testament law, which we're not under right now, but judging by that, that would be an abomination because pigs were brought in to be put for a sacrifice. The spirit of those people that are Christ deniers, Christ haters, and Christians are funneling money over there for them so that they can be hated and laughed at by the Ashkenazi that are not saved. That's terrible. That is terrible. And let's read what else the Lord says here, verse 7. And I will set my face against them. They shall go out from one fire and another fire shall devour them. That sounds like they're not getting away, right? <laughs> they get out from one fire and boom, another one's gonna get them. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I set my face against them. And I will make the land desolate because they have committed a trespass, saith the Lord. Perpetration is a trespass, right? Pretending to be something you're not is a trespass. Pretending to be the people of this book when they're not is a trespass. I'm sorry. It just is. Now, let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 through 13. Because you need to hear this. These are the scriptures that are going to keep you from following nonsense during these times about this war. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. I believe we're seeing that in record numbers. Actual, true, God-fearing people, there are far and few between. And then those that really, really, really are trying got other idiots that want to put yokes on them because they think they're more spiritual than them and debate about stupid things that don't mean anything. Do you know how bad of a witness that looks to people that might be on the fence about Christ? No other religion is at odds with itself. And Jesus said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. <sighs> so, there's the falling away. And here, hear this now. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. That's the Antichrist. He has not been revealed yet. He has not been revealed yet. Okay? That's another thing that should show you because the word just said, I'm not going to speak for myself. I'm going to let God speak for me. Let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. Okay. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. The only time that the son of perdition is used other than here in Thessalonians is in the gospel of John when is speaking about Judas who betrayed Jesus. Yes, the Antichrist obviously went into him. There's scripture that says when Satan entered him. So just like the Holy Spirit, the paraclete is the spirit of God, there is 
and antichrist spirit, which is the spirit of Satan, because he's a mimicker. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God? The Talmud, the Jews do that. Cry to the dead, watch that sermon. Out of their own words, they do exalt themselves above God. Or that is worshipped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Mm. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. That sounds a lot like what happens in Revelation, does it not? I'd say that this is exactly the same vision of that. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness and all of unrighteousness, in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. So these people, they will not receive the love of the truth so that they can be saved. They'd rather be unrighteous and be deceived and perish. And for this cause, God, God, the Most High, shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That's why numbers are so skewed. Look at all these false prophets on YouTube. All the numbers they got. Real men of God, nobody cares. A few remnant that need to hear it do. And that's the truth. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But know that it's God that sends this delusion. Don't give so much credit to the devil. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chose you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. You see, so before the foundations of the world. Before the beginning, from the beginning, God chose you to salvation through sanctification. So the process of sanctification, one works on their whole life, as long as they're on this earth. But you were chosen by God from the beginning. Don't ever forget that. Don't ever forget that. There's a message I recently preached that will be up soon, Lord willing, called God Puts Plants in Darkness. That's a great message about this. So now, I got to hammer it into these fake pastors that are leading God's people astray, especially in this war. We're going to go to Jeremiah verse 20, chapter 23, verses 1 through 6. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries whither I have driven them and will bring them again to their folds and they shall be fruitful and increase. And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. You know, that sounds a lot like when the Lord brings the new Jerusalem and gets rid of the devil and throws all the wicked in that lake of fire. That sounds a lot like that time coming. 
what was just read here, that God will give them shepherds, his people shepherds, that will truly feed them, and they shall fear no more nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. You know that's Jesus Christ, right? That's exactly who that righteous branch is. In his days, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. So because in these days of Jeremiah, the um, children of Israel, well, they were divided. There was two kingdoms, northern, southern kingdom. Southern kingdom was Judea, um, uh, the Levites, Benjamin, and uh, tribe of Judah. And all the rest were up north in Israel. That was the two kingdoms. So to read this today, where it speaks about that, um, where is that? Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days, Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. That's all of God's people because it's, it's talking about both the kingdoms. Today, in the church, that is all of God's people. And this is his name, whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. That is Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We're going to stay in Jeremiah 23, go to verses 16 and 17. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. So you need to realize this, people, that there are many people out there that claim to be prophets and they speak out of their own heart and they say things God never told them to say. How can you know this? How can you know when you're dealing with somebody like this? Does what they say line up with scripture? If any part of it doesn't, it's out of their own mind. And God did not tell them to do that. God judges his ministers very harshly compared to his children. They say, still unto them that despise me, the Lord hath said, ye shall have peace. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. That's what the Most High God said. So we just read that in Jeremiah, where these fake pastors will say, oh, it's going to be peace. Nah, man, it ain't going to be no damn peace. It ain't going to be no peace. Evil shall come upon them. Thus saith the Lord. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 3 through 4. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. <laughs> the, unri the, the unrighteous will not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. So I say again, rejoice in these scriptures. Whatever is going on over there, pray for the souls that are being tormented and dying and murdered and killed and martyred if they are Christians. Pray for them that the Lord will have mercy on them all. But that show over there, that war, know what it is and know what it is not. Okay? We're going to go to the Holy Gospel of Luke, chapter 21, verses 24 through 28 now. And hear what Jesus said. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles 
until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So, again, I am going to say this right now. That's what's happening right now. The true Jews, the true Hebrews, are not in that land. They're scattered abroad. We've been reading it all night here in Scripture, that God will scatter and has scattered his people. The time of the Gentiles, Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. The Ashkenazis are a Sephardic, cathartic Jews from Russia, okay? They are not the people of this book. If they don't have Christ, it doesn't matter. But what I am saying is the big mystery of the time of the Gentiles, well, until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled, those are Gentiles over there. The Palestinians, they're Semites because they are from the line of Ishmael. And we read about the blessing in the beginning of the sermon that God gave to Ishmael. He gave him 12 tribes, basically, just 12 nations, 12, just like he gave to Jacob, but without the covenant, okay? That was what was missing. Nobody ever wants to talk about that. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. And upon the earth, the stress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Now listen, I think weird things are happening with the sun. They've created a fake sun. The sun today is not the color the sun was when I was a child. The sun used to be yellow. Now it's just this weird white, okay? There's changes. The moon, the moon is acting so weird that I've noticed it moves faster than it should. It's huge sometimes in the same night. It's huge, then it's small. Then it looks like it turned a little bit. It's weird. Stars, stars and are, are, are acting weird too. So these things are happening. These things are happening. And upon the earth, the stress of nations with perplexing the sea and the waves, yes. Men's hearts failing them for fear and looking after those things which are coming on the earth. The powers, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Yes, we are going to see things come up from the dumps in these underground bases, because that's what they're called. And all these Nephilims that are down there with the armies of the world, they're going to come up and men's hearts will fail them. They'll fail them from the blue beam technology as well. They'll fail them from the Starlinks tracking everything. So people that do have to go into the wilderness fleeing from Judea, They'll try to find them. Only the Holy Spirit will keep you. That's when Psalm 91 is so important. And you need to have the faith. You need to have the faith and walk in it. It's easy to sit here and talk about these things. But if you're falling apart now, when life is still gravy in the United States, yes, there are crazy things happening. Men of God are getting shot in the head for preaching the word. But God told us these types of things would happen. Don't let that deter you. Do you understand? Overstand and understand, please. So after we read verse 26 here, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. That's literal. All three heavens will be shaken. The third heaven is God, where God's throne is. The second heaven is what people think of as outer space. There is no outer space, not in that sense. There's a liquid medium up there. Uh, uh, what was the sermon I did? Um, the Galaxy of Christ, the first one. I haven't even preached the other two yet. But the uh, first one will be up at some point, Lord willing, as well. Uh, again, um, I show how there's no difference between stars and planets in that, with actual footage of it. So, the heavens that will be shaken, the powers of heaven shall be shaken, when Michael overthrows Satan and Jesus destroys with the with 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 with, with the fire the two-edged sword of flame from his mouth with the cloud of witnesses which are the saints 
that have been martyred and those that maybe are getting raptured at that moment, who knows? But there will be a cloud of witnesses and people with Jesus. The powers of heaven that are being shaken, it's the force that is coming from the new Jerusalem coming down from the third heaven, destroying the third heaven, destroying the second heaven where the planets and stars are, which are, for the most part, fallen angels that are in chains. That's why it speaks of in Revelation when the Satan's tail sweeps them down and they will fall to the earth. Yes, those stars will fall to the earth. That could be why men's hearts fail them too. There's so many things. But that's what it means when the powers of heaven shall be shaken because everything needs to get destroyed for there to be a new heaven and a new earth. Then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. My God, thank you, Lord. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draw nigh. Praise God for that. One more scripture here. Ezekiel 28, 25 to 26. Thus saith the Lord God, when I shall have gathered the house of Israel from the people among whom they are scattered and shall be sanctified in them in the sight of the heathen. Let, let's break this down. Thus saith the Lord God, when I shall have gathered the house of Israel from the people among whom they are scattered. So the real Israelites are scattered and shall be sanctified in them in the sight of of the heathen, then shall they dwell in their land that I have given to my servant Jacob. So this is after the time of the Gentiles that they have been trotting down Jerusalem, which is those people that have been occupying that land for a very long time now. I found in scripture from where it really started to happen, and I'll bring that up in another word. It's not for this message, but. Uh, that's what the time of the Gentiles is. And when it's fulfilled is, when, is the culmination of these things. Where the Lord just said here that Israel, that I shall have gathered, when I shall have gathered the house of Israel from the people among whom they are scattered and shall be sanctified in them, in the sight of the heathen. Those are heathen over there. Then, they, then shall they dwell in their land that I have given to my servant Jacob oh so long ago. But that will be the new Jerusalem. This Israel that he's talking about, that the Most High is talking about here, is the 144,000, okay, that are spoken of in Revelation. Because those are blood Israel from each tribe, except for the tribe of Dan. Verse 26, and you'll see, this is, this is beautiful because this is a premonition of the new Jerusalem. And they shall dwell safely therein and shall build houses and plant vineyards. Yea, they shall dwell with confidence when I have executed judgments upon all those that despise them round about. And they shall know that I am the Lord, their God. Not the Zionist agenda, God. That God is Satan, and he's destroyed by this time. Okay, so, one more thing, we're not gonna go through all of it, but if you guys wanna have a good understanding of the uh, prophecies of Daniel, chapter 12 of Daniel, Y'all should really study that chapter. I'm only going to read verse 10 because this is very, very interesting here, okay? Many shall be purified and made white and tried. So the made white means that they're going to be pure. Jesus tells us that we will have white garments on in the throne room in Revelation when all the saints are gathered and they're like, Lord, is it time yet to go? And he says, no, a little bit longer for the last one to be martyred, to have the head chopped, needs to come before they ride out, okay? This is putting all of it together here, okay? Look, 
This is Daniel chapter 12, verse 10. Many shall be purified and made white and tried. Tried means that they were tested. But the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand. But the wise shall understand. So if this is something, this topic has been something that you can't catch or it really doesn't resonate with you, you need to res <laughs> evaluate where you stand in this thing. You really do. But if this hit you well, like, wow, praise God for this message. Not for me, but for this message. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly. And none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Okay? I'm going to leave you with that. Read chapter 12 of Daniel. It's very uh, important to understand all these things. Do not under any circumstance fall for false pastors and preachers that are telling lies and trying to give you to give money to Israel or whatever. Look, we just read here tonight, Israel needs to burn, okay? That's why Jesus tells his people to flee and don't even grab a coat, don't go inside for nothing, flee. We read all the prophecy, the times of what it needs to be. The lawless one needs to be revealed, the son of perdition, the antichrist needs to be revealed. That doesn't mean when Prince Charles became King Charles and people saw the, uh, the, the, the Grim Reaper walk by, which that was on purpose, that's not a, a revealing of the Antichrist. It's not. There's power that he needs to take. He needs to take a throne. Okay? We didn't get into Revelation because that, that the book of Revelation, that's just too much for this talk. But for this war of Palestine and Israel right now, I hope you all took away the fact that we read how Ishmael was blessed. Twelve I don't want to say 12 tribes. Let's go to the scripture and see exactly how the Lord worded it. But there was 12, 12 rulers that, um, there it is. Let me stop talking and put the word up. Genesis 17, 20. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. Okay? Those Palestinians are remnants of Ishmael, but without Jesus Christ as their Savior, it's all for nothing. But you need to be able to understand and decipher the word versus what the world is putting out there for y'all to see. Okay? So you don't get bamboozled, so you don't get so like. I don't know what's going on. Could this really be happening? No. Look, there's a millennium reign of Christ and then Satan gets loosed. That's all I'm going to say about that right now. And then the Battle of Armageddon is two separate events. They're, 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 they're mutually exclusive, okay? There's so much that Christians need to know and following these these false pastors and fake prophets, as the Lord says, is not going to work. But know this, the abomination of desolation has to be something that stands. So, yes, it was a statue of Zeus before. It was the pigs that were being sacrificed as, uh, for, for sacrifices, for offerings that were instituted back in the days of the uh, Greeks. But it's also the fulfillment of the Gentiles that are trotting down Jerusalem right now. The Jews that say they are and are not. I pray this message stays up on YouTube. I pray all of y'all are blessed by this message. You got something from it. Hit me up if you need anything. We do deliverance. Um, you know, people have demons and you need to be set free. Um, Whatever it may be, any type of ministerial thing, I'm here for y'all. Love you. God bless. In Jesus' name.
Stay safe.